Hello, hello, and welcome to the Borealis Experience. I'm your host, Aurora, life coach and companion on this beautiful journey called life. I hope you feel good. I hope you feel relaxed. I hope life is flowing nicely. I hope that you can feel good and comfortable in your skin. And if it is not the case, then... I hope that I can bring you some value and help you, you know, bring down that um, stress level of yours and, and make you feel okay a little bit, yeah, more okay with where you're at if you don't like it right now <clears throat> and create a space for you where you can relax and simply recharge your batteries. It is June 21st, summer, solstice, and uh, yeah, it's been quite the ride. This year has been quite an interesting year for me, um, but yeah, I think we all, we all have uh, stuff to work through and situations that are being thrown at us that are not easy to deal with and then there's other people who are thriving and very inspiring so it's a constant change constant up and down and today I want to talk about the obstacles that we put in our own way in which way do we stress not only each other out but do we stress ourselves out it is very interesting to observe and to be you know a little detective when it comes to articles online and I don't really have the source of where I heard this the other uh, day but it was not for me it was somebody who had done the research that there is people out there <laughs> and he even said 50% of the people out there <clears throat> that create stress for themselves that is not necessary. And he said they're, they're going back to the childhood of the people that um, were the, the uh, you know, addicted to the stress, the stressors, so to say, in society. And they found out that those people usually had a very tensed situations at home. It was, you know, sometimes good, sometimes not so good, but overall there was always a slight tension within the family. So the nervous system of the child adapts to that tension and makes it normal. And a person that grows up in a tensed household that learns that a specific tension in the nervous system is normal, goes out into the world now unconsciously seeking this normal, this um, behavior, those situations, everything really that can get that nervous system into that state of how it was back then in the tensed, um, dysregulated household will make this people, these people feel normal and somewhat good. Even though it is stress, even though it is not comfortable, they will find that it is familiar. And what the brain always seeks and us as little habit animals will find comfort in great discomfort because that is what we learned at a young age. So a person like that will seem scattered all over the place, unorganized. Sometimes it is a mixture of a people pleaser. So people who keep say, saying yes to projects, to tasks, to things that have to get done because they also learn maybe at home that you have to be of service to others. So now if you have the combination of both a people pleaser and a person who feels at home when the nervous system is running crazy, 
what a bombastic combination of chemi <laughs> chemicals do you then have? It's a very interesting one, I want to say. And maybe you can reflect about yourself right now or you can think of a person and maybe you thought of a person already while I was saying this because every second person struggles with being somewhat addicted to stress. I find that so, so crazy interesting. And they not only labeled it stress, they, only, they also labeled it drama. So people who label love and relationships as um, messy or love is dramatic or love is unpredictable, people will seek out these relationships and these people that match this belief system. Isn't that so fascinating? Right, even though we can read books and study and go to coaching and go to psychotherapists and take our little pills, if we don't go all the way down to the root cause on how we were calibrated, how we were conditioned when we were young and what our normal is, we will not be able to change this and we will keep running into problems because people are constantly burning out now after COVID more than ever because we are out and about again and there's not only the work-life balance <laughs> that is um, making life difficult for people but also um, the, the leisure time stress that it's really a thing leisure time stress that people have so many positive activities scheduled in that sometimes it gets so much that it ends up being stressful and that's totally fascinating with me so if you didn't learn to have boundaries with yourself boundary boundaries with others you will keep running into problems you will keep burning yourself out you will not be able to keep your household clean and tidy you will not be able to keep your body healthy and in some way tidy because it will all feel like a to-do and it's just too much right when the to-dos get too much we usually throw out the window intimacy kindness self-care And it's, it's crazy how, how it can change the character of a person to a point that you really cannot recognize them anymore. So all this to say is, I invite you to reflect about your life. How do you organize your life? To what do you say yes? To which behavior do you, like which behavior do you tolerate from other people where do you set boundaries with yourself and where can you confidently say no because if you say yes you know you will end up in a in a weird situation of exhaustment of resentment um where is it that you are avoiding uncomfortable conversations Really, conversations that make you cringe when you think of them. Cringe? No, I don't... No, uh, it's another word that I'm looking for. Uh, not crunch, cringe. Um, you know what I mean. A comfortable, an uncomfortable conversation that will, um, you know, maybe expose a person, uh, maybe make another person feel uncomfortable and you're scared of their reaction. Um, by not setting your boundaries, by not engaging in these conversations, you are pushing things underneath a rug where then there is being resentment built, resentment and anger and sadness, which can lead to depression if you don't address it. So 
the more a person knows themselves, and you know that is something that I keep repeating on and on in my podcast, in my yoga studio, in my coaching classes, the more you know yourself, the better you're going to be at setting boundaries the better you know where your limits are, you will know how much can I take on, when do I have to start to say no, and you will know how to express yourself in those uncomfortable conversations. Because the more you avoid those, the more you will realize that your relationships are going to be tough, avoidant, inauthentic, exhausting, and you might end up hermiting and labeling yourself as an introvert, but not because you are a genuine introvert, but because you don't know how to handle your own emotions and your expression in the world and how you can relate to people in a healthy way. That is where the nitty gritty is. This is where the dog is buried, like we say in German. And... It is really, really important to notice, hey, I'm exhausted, I'm burned out, I'm sad, I'm tired, I'm angry, I'm irritated, I'm agitated. Let's start and think about where you can reduce your stress, where you can teach your nervous system that being in a calm state is not a weakness. Being in a calm state, even if it feels uncomfortable at first, even if your mind will kick in and give you 10,000 excuses to not be in a calm state right now, try it out just a couple minutes a day after waking up in the morning. Set your alarm clock tomorrow morning just two minutes earlier and once you wake up, take those two minutes to just sit on your bed and to feel your body, to embrace the new day, to be grateful for who you are and the mission you're on. And you can start from there. It doesn't have to be big jumps. And if you need to talk to somebody about your stress and how you handle stress and how you possibly create all the stress that you have in your life and want to start to take accountability for that, seek out a mentor, a coach, a therapist, um, whatever you can think of to help you out in feeling more grounded and stable, feeling more like yourself and not constantly overwhelmed and burned out. So I think I'm going to go deeper with this topic um, in future episodes because I realize that there is a lot of people out there including me that suffer from you know having to be busy otherwise we feel worthless and um, also from like suffer from um, unhealthy relationship dynamics where things are not being expressed that are difficult to express and in doing so and not expressing we make our life hard and miserable and we become toxic in our relationships so stay tuned with so much love i sent you out into the day or into the night wherever you are listening from and as always thank you so much to the donors to this podcast i love you so much I love that you believe in my mission and I'm so very grateful because without you this wouldn't be sustainable because I refuse to have um, advertisement on my podcast interrupting us from each other and yeah if you like this podcast please subscribe and uh, if you feel like you want to send a little donation there is a link in the notes and please, please, please leave me a review or a five-star rating um, because that helps us to be out there and to be seen by more people who need this kind of um, support. All right, take really good care and I will be out there very soon again. Bye-bye.